that we have through Growing Faithful Children. This is a, a work down in Jamaica. Some of you know that I have gone on mission trips to Jamaica, and it's with that group that I have worked with that we have an opportunity. Of course, they, like us, were uh, affected big time by the, by the virus and uh, their children in their schools uh, and for our school supplies and everything. And for $25, we can fill this a backpack up just like this one here and uh, and it'll be full of school supplies uh, for this fall and uh, it covers the shipping of getting it down there there's gonna be a group that's going down in September and we'll actually distribute these bags to the schools and to the kids and the cool part about this is it's all done under the Santa Cruz Church of Christ there, the local church. So it's not like we're handing them a backpack and saying, here, this is from Spanish Fort, Alabama. And in Jamaica, they have no clue where Spanish Fort, Alabama is. But they do have a clue about the Santa Cruz Church of Christ. And so it's a great opportunity for us to get the, the, the name of the church out into that community and also bless those children there who otherwise may not have an opportunity to have a school supply. So if you like to do that, just make sure you designate on your check. You can make it out to the church here. Each backpack is $25, and ever how many you want to sponsor, it would be awesome. And we need to finish that up this week, so if you don't mind, go ahead and doing that pretty soon, and we'll, we'll have that taken care of. But we're here to praise God. We're here to worship Him, lift Him on high for all that He is and all that He continues to do in our lives each and every day. So I hope you're ready to do that. Kurt's going to come up. He's going to be leading us. Let's get ready to do that. Standing, please. Go ahead and stand with me, please. Blessing and honor, glory and power, be to the ancient of days, from every nation, all of creation, by the Lord. Bye. 
Your kingdom shall reign over all the earth. We sing to the ancient of days. For none can compare to your matchless work. We sing to the ancient of days. Your kingdom shall reign over all the earth. We sing to the ancient of days. For none can Yeah. 
Let us, uh, let us pray to our God. Our dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we, we come to you in prayer this morning with hearts of praise and with hearts of thanksgiving. Lord, as we meet today on a day that we, we honor fathers and honor our fathers, Lord, please let us always remember, Lord, that you are our Father. Lord, you are the one who gives us life. You are the one who breathed life into us. It's your breath that is in our lungs, Lord. Lord, let us remember that you are the one who gives us and fulfills our needs each and every day, Lord, that all good things and blessings come from you. Lord, we're so thankful that we, you are there to watch over us, Lord, each and every day as individuals as we go through our lives, Lord, and that you hear every prayer that we send up to you and that you will meet our needs, Lord. Lord, we're so thankful for your grace. God, we're so thankful for your love and our Savior's love, his willingness to leave his throne and come down here to earth to die for us as the perfect sacrifice, Lord, so that we can have that grace and we can have forgiveness of our sins. Lord, we, we ask that as we look inside ourselves, that we'll see our, our shortcomings, Lord, and that, that when we confess those things to you, that you will forgive us of those sins, Lord, and give us the strength and give us the spiritual wisdom to be able to overcome those shortcomings, Lord, and become more of what you want for us to be. Lord, we ask that you watch over those of this congregation, God, that are traveling this weekend, and Lord, those that are sick, having... Uh, some type of, of ailments, Lord, that you would put your hand of healing, protection, and comfort over them so that they could soon be back with us here in this local body of your son, Jesus Christ. Lord, we ask all of these things in the great and holy name of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. On Zion for your son is turned on.
You know, I'm a father. This is Father's Day. And you know the idea of someone telling me that I would need to sacrifice any of my children for anyone else is a really hard thing for me to wrap my head around. Especially someone who was mean to me, someone who didn't like me, someone who was constantly in rebellion to me, someone who was more interested in doing what they wanted to do than what I knew was better for them to do, and then 
to say, okay, I'm willing to sacrifice one of my children so that they could be reconciled, so that I could have a better relationship with them, that is really beyond my comprehension. You know, as Jesus offered himself up, I, you know, if someone came to me and said, if you sacrifice yourself, the entire world could be saved, I might could get on board with that. But the idea of me sacrificing one of my children for that, that's, I, I don't, I, that's really hard. That's really hard for me. But that's what this feast is all about. That's what this remembrance is all about. The idea that the father asked the son to sacrifice himself for us and the son said yes that they were in total harmony and agreement about that. Even after he came here and took on flesh and endured all the things he had to endure, knowing the death that he was going to die, knowing what it was for, he was willing to go through with it. And even after he said, Father, if there's any other way, let this cup pass from me. And as a father, thinking about having one of my children say, is there any way we can get out of this? I would be racking my brain to try to think of a way to get out of that. But that's what this is all about. The ultimate sacrifice. That's why we gather on Sunday mornings. To worship a God that was willing to do what this feast remembers. And I hope as you partake of these emblems and as we think about these things, that this will kind of be on your heart. This sacrifice was made for you. Will you bow with me, please? Father, we're so thankful to you and your son for the love that you've demonstrated to us. It's so easy to say you love someone, but to demonstrate that love in the way that you and your son were willing to do is beyond our comprehension. We pray that you would be with us as we partake of this bread and as we think about that body that your son took on, his willingness to offer it, the pain that he endured, the suffering that he endured, the loneliness the despair, all of the things that he had to go through on our behalf. Help us as we partake of this bread that we'll remember that and that we'll draw strength from it in the coming week that we can try to be more like your son in our flesh. We pray these things through your son's name. Amen. you bow with me as we continue in prayer? Father, as we think about the blood that was shed, the terrible things that Christ had to go through on our behalf and the amount of blood that was shed, it's hard for us to imagine. But knowing that that blood cleanses us from all unrighteousness, knowing that when we walk in the light that that blood cleanses us of all of our sin, knowing that because of that blood that we can stand before you holy and righteous, that his righteousness and his holiness is accounted to us because of that blood. Be with us as we partake of this blood, this remembrance, this memorial, this emblem that to us is that blood, and help us remember the cleansing that we have because of it. We pray these things through your son's name. Amen. We never have an opportunity to return uh, a portion to God. Uh, there are baskets in the foyer. There's PayPal. There's, I don't know about you, I've, I've never done this before, before we started all of this. Uh, I always wrote a check every Sunday morning and brought it and dropped it in the collection plate. But since this has started, uh, and I find this easier, maybe it's not, maybe it'd be better if it was a little more uh, difficult, but I, I've gotten to where I just, I have my bank automatically every week 
cut a check and mail it to the, to the church. So I don't have to actually physically write it anymore. Uh, you know, one of the things they say about paying taxes is that when you actually have to, to sit down and write that check, it makes you think about what in the world am I, I paying for. So maybe it's not a good thing. Maybe it is a good thing. It's a whole lot more convenient. But there are so, several different ways to give. And I pray that your heart is a giving heart, uh, that you understand that uh, the things that you give, the, the way that we give and the things that we do here are all made possible by our time, our efforts, and our physical things that we do and the physical things that we sacrifice. So let's bow as we pray. Father, we're so grateful to have been here this morning. We're so thankful for the worship that we've been able to do. We're especially thankful for the blessings that you give us each and every day, not only the physical blessings that we, we can see, but the spiritual blessings and understanding the, the peace and the joy that we can have, uh, knowing that there are people in this world that would give their entire fortunes to have the peace and the joy that we have, uh, knowing that we have it through your Son, uh, should make us feel so special and, and so loving and, and so generous. Uh, be with us as we give. Always help us to be mindful of what we give. Help us to put thought in it and not just do it in a haphazard manner. We pray these things through your son's name. Amen. So now it's time for um, let's do the, the kids offering. So we'll sing Dear Slow's name, then the Lord. Walk patiently and sweetly up to the front and put, uh, put the money in, in the bucket. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. They
Father's Day to all the dads out there, all my fellow dads. I hope that it is a special day uh, for you. Perhaps it's already started that way. If not, then I uh, give it time. Uh, maybe, uh, maybe it'll turn out good. Uh, but I'm sure that most of you know that Father's Day is not altogether like it is on Mother's Day. The restaurants today won't be quite as crowded as they are on Mother's Day, and the card shop was not as busy this week, and uh, even church attendance pales in a t comparison to, uh, to Mother's Day. Maybe you heard the story about the uh, family had three little children, and uh, they wanted uh, to get a puppy, and they really worked on mom about that puppy. And finally, uh, mom caved in and said, uh, we'll get a puppy. But here's the deal. Each of you have to take care of it. I'm not going to take care of that dog. And if I have to take care of the dog, then that means we have to get rid of the dog. And all three of the children said, yes, we'll do whatever we have to do. But we want that puppy. So they went and they found a little puppy and they got it. And the little children named the puppy Danny. And they all took care of Danny for about a month or so. But as time went on, as I can tell you from experience, the responsibility for the children taking care of the dog started to go away. And mom was the one that was taking care of the dog. And finally, mom called a meeting and said, look, y'all have violated the agreement, and we're going to have to get rid of Danny. And to her surprise, the little children didn't even bat an eye. In fact, one of them said, well, if he wasn't so messy and he didn't eat all the time and all that stuff, maybe we could keep him. So she went and found it a new home. Walked in one morning and said, it's time to take Danny to his new home. She, and the little children said, wait a minute. We thought you said Daddy, not Danny. <laughs> Like I said, we don't always get all the respect that we deserve, right? But that doesn't mean that we're any less important. And what usually happens on Father's Day, if a preacher decides to preach on it, is we kind of beat our dad, beat all the dads up. You know, we, we talk about all the things we need to do better. But I don't want to do that today. What I'd rather for us all to do is to consider the greatest dad ever. And that's God, our Father, our Heavenly Father. 
God has a lot of roles in the life of the Christ follower. But one of the most significant, important roles there is, is him as our father. Our theme verse comes from Isaiah. It says, but now, O Lord, you are our father. We are the clay, you are the potter, we are the work of your hand. Oh, Lord, you are our Father. I suppose the goal this morning is for us to allow that to sink in. We know it. We've heard it. We acknowledge it. But I guess, as Kurt was talking about a moment ago, the idea of being able to to talk to him, to be able to interact with him, to be able to have a relationship with him, Maybe sometimes those are things that we just take for granted. Those are things that we just kind of assume all along. So this morning, think about your good, good father. Remember in Matthew chapter 6, Jesus' disciples come to him and ask him to teach them how to pray. And Jesus says, here's how you start. You say, our father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. In fact, over a hundred times in the Gospels, we see Jesus referring to God as Father. And the word that he used most was the intimate term in the Aramaic, Abba. Abba, Father. The word Abba literally means Daddy. It's a word that every infant child on the planet would use to express their innate need for a father. And this is important. Whether you had the greatest dad on the planet or whether your father was a disappointment, we need to remember something. Our earthly fathers are nothing like our heavenly father. Jesus once told a story in rather Luke chapter 15 about a young man who comes to his dad and asks his dad for his inheritance early. And so we read this story and we discover that the father in the story is representative of God. His actions, his response, his attitudes, they're all descriptive of the father, God. And in the story, the dad amazingly agrees to give the son his money and the son leaves and goes off and blows it. He finds himself broke. He finds himself without any friends. He finds himself in the pig pen eating with the pigs. And so he decides, I need to get up. I need to go back. I need to go to my father and I need to petition my father that that let me be a servant because I'm no longer worthy to be called a son. And so as he does that and as he approaches The father, the father sees him and runs out to him. And here's how it's described. And the son said, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you, and I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to the servants, Bring quickly the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet. And bring the fatted calf and kill it. And let's eat and let's celebrate. For this is my son who was dead and is alive again. And he was lost and is found And so they began to celebrate. Now keep in mind, there's so many things in this familiar story of the prodigal that we, we talk about, but what Jesus is trying to paint for us is a picture or an image of our Father, God. And it perfectly illustrates the kind of Father we have in God. One that loves us unconditionally, One that runs towards us even when we run away from him. One who never gives up on his kid. And so what I want us to do this morning is consider this good, good father. And some of the things that we'll see is this, is that he is a patient father. There's a man whose car stalled out at a red light. I don't know if you've ever had that happen to you. It can be unnerving. I mean, the moments can seem like an eternity. 
and the thing won't crank. It's just turning over, and you're sitting there, and traffic is piling up around you. And that was happening to this guy, and all of a sudden there was this sea of horns blowing behind. I don't know why people have to do that, but they do. And so the guy's sitting there desperately trying to get his car started, and all these horns are blowing. So finally, he stops, he gets out, he goes back to the first car behind him. He walks up and he says, listen, my car stalled out and it won't crank. And if you don't mind, would you go up there and try to crank it, and I'll sit back here and blow the horn. (laughs) Patience. Sometimes we don't have a lot of that, do we? The Bible describing love in 1 Corinthians 13 says love is patient. And the Greek word that's used there for patience is a descriptive descriptive, uh, term in the sense that it is figuratively talking about taking a long time to boil. Now think about boiling a pot of water. How long does it take for that water to boil? What are the factors that go into that? Is it the size of the stove? Well, not really. What about the size of the pot? Well, some utensils may make a difference. But basically the difference is is the size of the flame. The higher the flame, the quicker it's going to come to the ball. And the lower the flame, the, the, the slower it's going to come to a ball. Patience is keeping the flame low. God, in his passionate desire to have a relationship with us, exhibits a perfect patience waiting on us to make that decision. If you're a parent, you know how difficult it can be to wait on your child, to wait on them to come to their senses, to wait on them to do the right thing. But that is exactly what this father does in our story. He waits and he waits and he waits and he waits some more. And I've often wondered how many times did this dad want to run and go and try to find his son? Try to talk some sense into him. Try to help him. Try to encourage him to come back uh, just to make sure he's okay, that he's still alive. But he doesn't. You remember the occasion when the young man comes to Jesus and and says, what do I need to do to have eternal life? And Jesus says, well, you need to do this, this, and this. And he said, oh, I've done all those things. I've checked those off the list. And Jesus said, but there's one thing you lack, and you need to sell all you have and give to the poor. The Bible says he went away for sorrowful. And Jesus let him walk away. Jesus didn't chase after him. Jesus waited for him to figure it out. That's what this father's doing. He's waiting on the son. Now, unlike many of us dads, our heavenly father is patient. And not just for the sake of patience, but rather he's waiting for all of us to come to our senses and to come home. And Peter would tell us the Lord is not slow to fulfill his promise, as some count slowness, but is patient toward you, not wishing that any should perish, but that all should reach repentance. Can you imagine this dad standing on the edge of town every day and thinking, could this be the day? Is today the day that he comes to his senses? Is today the day that he realizes that I still love him? Listen, this message is for all of us. It doesn't matter what we've done. It doesn't matter how messed up our life can be. It doesn't matter how far we've gone. God is wondering, is today the day? And listen, church, God is a God of second chances. Think about Paul. This is enemy number one. This this guy's persecuting the church. This guy's imprisoning people. This guy's having people executed. This guy was totally against the cause. But God met him on the road and offered to him a second chance. 
Why? Why would God do that? Why, why would God offer me a second chance? Or why would God even offer you a second chance? And Paul would later tell us, but I received mercy for this reason, that in me, as the foremost, Jesus Christ might display his perfect patience as an example to those who were to believe in him for eternal life. Our good, good father is a patient father, and he's also a forgiving father. Now, the human tendency is to look at a story like this and reach the conclusion that this young boy is getting exactly what he deserved, the pig pen. And you're right. He is. These were his choices. These were his decisions. And all of this is a result of what he did. He is getting what he deserves. He had disrespected his father. He had trashed the family name. He had embarrassed the family. And because of all that, he ends up in the pig pen. So, yeah, in a sense, he deserved that. But spiritually speaking, we're no different. The Bible says that we've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. We all deserve spiritual death. We all deserve condemnation. We all deserve hell. But because we have sinned and because of the wages of sin is death, but notice this, what Paul said, in him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses according to the riches of his grace, which he lavished upon us in all wisdom and insight. Let me ask you a question. What did this young man do to deserve his father's forgiveness? And the answer is nothing. He didn't do anything. He didn't earn it. He didn't work for it. He didn't make it back up to God somehow. He came to his senses and he went home. Have you ever noticed in the story he never apologized? Because before he could finish this rehearsed speech, God sprang into action. One author put it like this in a statement. It said, forgiveness always comes at the cost of the one granting the forgiveness. And when you consider the forgiveness of God in our life, never forget what it cost. It cost his son. Our father, who art in heaven, gave his son to die for us. He was so willing to forgive our filth that he sent Jesus to take on our filth. In Isaiah 43, in verse 25, the Bible says this, I, I am he who blots out your transgressions for my own sake, and I will not remember your sins. So we have this father who is patient, who's waiting, who's forgiving. And we also have a proud father. Let me ask you a question to consider. As one of his children, is God proud of you? Now, if you're like me, (laughs) almost immediately you get a kind of a bad feeling inside and you want to kind of yell and say, no, there's no way. I've never done enough for God to be proud of me. I've messed up too many times for God to be proud of me. I'm not good enough for God to ever be proud of me. Well, I got a verse for us. Isaiah 43, 4 says, Because you are precious in my eyes and honored, and I love you. Barb told me a really neat story this week. Over where her mom lives, there's a gentleman there by the name of Mr. Dahl. And Mr. Doyle kind of makes his way around and speaks to everybody. And he comes over and talks to Miss Pat a lot. And Mr. Doyle this week was so excited. His granddaughter won the Miss Alabama contest. 
and she's now going to represent the state in the Miss America contest. And Mr. Dahl was just beside himself. He was coming over and telling everybody, and then he was going around the whole facility, and he's telling everybody she's going to be interviewed by this TV station, one of the local stations, and here's what time and you need to watch. He was so proud of his granddaughter. He wanted to tell everybody. This father in our story is so proud of his son for coming home. He wants everybody to know it. He wants everybody to celebrate. People post pictures on Facebook all the time of their kids. And they post pictures of them playing ball and they post pictures of them getting awards and they post pictures of the trophies and, and the first day of school and the last day of school and, and everything in between. And they do that, I guess, because they're very proud of their children and their accomplishments. Imagine this morning if God had a Facebook page or an Instagram account. What would his story be? What would he post? What would he tweet about? What would he share? You. He'd share you and me. His children. Because he's proud. He's proud of us. But he's not only proud of us, he loves us more than we can ever imagine. No matter how messed up we make our lives, no matter how far you've gone, no matter how filthy you get, you are precious. And I love you. And and I love the the lyrics of the song we're going to sing in a few moments, Good, Good Father, where it says, you are a good, good father. It is who you are. It is who you are. You see, as a dad, I can stand here and tell you that I work real hard at trying to be patient and trying to be forgiving and and loving and a hundred other things that I need to be, but I also can stand here and tell you as well as my children that I am a miserable failure in a lot of those things. I've often failed. But as a child of God, I can rest assured that I have a father who's always there when I fall, always willing to forgive me when I fail, and who will always, always love me. So this morning, as we close, one theologian said this, if you want to judge or measure how much someone really understands Christianity, then simply measure their thought of what it means to be a child of God and to have God as our Father. You see, this morning, Father's Day is sometimes a a difficult day for people. Maybe your dad's no longer here. Or maybe your dad was never there. Or maybe your dad was a disappointment. And for some of us, we celebrate our dads as, as a great dad and all that he's done for us. So there's a mix of emotions for Mother's Day and Father's Day, and I get all that. But for every one of us in this room, we need to remember that every day we can have God as our Father. We can be His child. We can have a relationship with the Creator of this world. He is our Father. 
He is our Abba. And that's special. He's a good, good father. That's who he is. Do you have a relationship with him today? And if you don't, you can. Because he wants to have a relationship with you. He wants to be your father. And all we have to do is surrender our life to him, confess our faith, be baptized, and enter that relationship with him. Or maybe for some reason we haven't had a good relationship with our father, our heavenly father, our good father. We can make that right today too. Whatever your need is, why you decide, let's all stand and sing. I've heard a thousand stories of what they need your life, but I've heard tender
always be living life you know that's true every second of every day and help us to be a good father um, and even if we're not a biological father um, just be an example um, of, of men and um, godly men that, that lead and um, that give children and young, young boys and um, teenagers somebody to look up to um, just help us to live every day like we know that we're saving you. Thank you.